What's up guys, welcome to G Whiskey, my name is Jeff. This is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on specific whiskey, and if you stick around at the end, I'll be giving it a score as well. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below. With that out of the way, let's jump into our review. Today we're looking at the Port Charlotte SC01. Stick around. Okay, so we're looking at the Port Charlotte SC01 today. This one is the latest, or at least I think it's the latest. It's definitely the most widely available currently from the Cask Exploration series. And if you've been following the channel at all, you know that I absolutely love everything from this series so far. Cask Exploration, of course, kind of self-explanatory. They're playing around with different casks for these releases. So far on the channel, I've looked at the PAC and I've looked at the OLC. I love both of them. The OLC had a sherry finish. The PAC had a French wine finish. Uh, what we've got here is another type of French wine. This one's finished in Sauternes or Sauternes casks, and it's a little bit different from the rest of the line, but we'll touch on that later. This one's actually the first from the cask exploration line to be made 100% with Isla Barley. Apparently all the barley was grown within seven miles of the distillery, which is kind of cool. Uh, it's a nine-year-old. It was peated at 40 ppm. Interestingly, this was peated on the mainland and then sent back to Berkladdy, where it spent time in first and second fill bourbon barrels, sherry barrels, and of course we have the Sotown finish. So we've got kind of an interesting production process. We have quite a few casks in the mix, and of course, as usual, Berkladdy is kind enough to share all of those details with us, which is appreciated. Like I said, I've been very happy with the whiskeys I've had from this line so far. So this is not a whiskey that I was skeptical about in any way. I figured it would be good, but the thing is, I don't love Sotown in my whiskey. I don't think it's a bad wine influence. Uh, I don't think it's particularly good either. I'm kind of neutral on it, but I definitely don't see something with a Sotown influence and think, I simply must try this. It's like pineapple on pizza. I feel like we're all told we either have to really love or really hate pineapple on pizza. Uh, I don't know, maybe some of you out there have really strong feelings about this. I don't, it's not a love, it's not a hate. I think pineapple on pizza is fine. Especially living here in Taiwan, pineapple on pizza is nothing. I've seen some stuff, man. Anyway, Sotown, it's fine. It can be good. It's not something I seek out, but I do seek out whiskeys from this line. So Sotown or not, expectations are high for this one. Let's jump in and see where I land on it. In the meantime, if you'll kindly leave a like down below, that'd be greatly appreciated. Good specs, 55.2% ABV. Of course, it's non-chill filtered. Of course, it's natural color. They do not do us dirty at Berkladdy. Good people. Love the look here. I'm always a fan of these PC bottles. They are pretty much all the same, whether you're looking at the tin or the cask exploration line or the Isle of Barley line. They all have that dark, minimalist, kind of a stylish apothecary style bottle. I'm all for it. I think it looks great. Five out of five for presentation. Obviously, the whiskey is non chill filtered and natural color, although they don't put it on the bottle. We do get a bunch of production info on the box and if we go to the website. So it's not a lack of transparency. It's not a lack of I don't have a bigger word than transparency. They do tell us everything we need to know, but again, non-chill filter, natural color. We could put that on the bottle. Small gripe. On the nose, we get a nice, full, intense peatiness. We get loads of barley, cereals, honey, vanilla. There's smoked ham, there's pastrami, there's deli meats in here. We get sweet ginger in here. We get some of those sweet white wine notes from the Sauternes casks. Uh, we get white pepper. It's really the barley that stands out here. Uh, it's a really nice nose. On the palate and finish, we get a beautiful gentle sweetness with a very malty, barley forward, peaty character here. We get loads of ginger. There's lemon drops, there's lemon candy. It's a little bit floral, it's a little bit grassy. And we get a long finish lingering on some very earthy, salty notes and again that barley. So this one's actually a pretty big departure from the rest of the line. So if you're looking for another OLC or PAC or MRC, this isn't it. In fact, this one isn't quite as complex as those other ones. The other ones are fruitier and they have a little bit more going on. This one is more simple and straightforward in its delivery. Of course, though, it's important to remember that complexity is not what makes a whiskey great. Flavor does, and this does have some excellent flavors. Uh, as I mentioned, the barley really shines in this. Like, man, do we get some really good barley here. 
This is probably one of the best barley forward characters that I've had in a while. And the thing is, usually I commend the other whiskeys from this series for their beautiful cask play. We do have some beautiful cask play in here, but it's more the base spirit that sells this whiskey. Uh, and the peat, of course, is beautiful here. It's a very coastal peat, which is odd because it was peated on the mainland, but we get plenty of salty, briny notes in here, which are fantastic. They work really well with that barley note. Comes together beautifully. So how does this one size up against the others from the line? Is it as good? No, I don't think so. I do prefer the other ones. Um, the other ones are more about the casks. This one does feel more stripped down, which is odd because I mean, this again has spent time in first and second fill bourbon. It spent time in sherry casks and of course the salt town. So it's spent plenty of time in some pretty serious casks. Still overall, this whiskey comes across less busy we do get the cask influence, but it's just not quite as forward as it is from the other whiskeys from this line. And I actually prefer that more cask forward profile that we get in stuff like the OLC and the PAC, which is ironic because I'm always the guy that's saying I prefer a gentler cask influence in my whiskey. So the hypocrisy on this channel is disgusting. Anyway, my score here is going to be 90, which is actually the lowest score I've ever given to any whiskey from the cask exploration line, which is very telling. Um, Port Charlotte, great brand. The cask exploration series, great line of whiskeys. And the SCO one, it's great. I love the big flavors in here. I love the intensity. Again, that barley flavor. It kind of reminds me more of a Brook Laddie than a Port Charlotte which is fine because pretty much anything coming out of Berkladdy, whether it's peated or unpeated, fantastic stuff. So this is one that I am recommending highly. It's got a different profile from the rest of the line, but I think that's part of the appeal. You don't want to do the same thing over and over again. It's still got all the quality that we've come to expect from this series. If you like big, intense PD whiskeys, if you like barley forward profiles, definitely worth checking out. Now let's look at value. So the question that always pops up when I'm looking at these whiskeys is, are they worth that much more than the 10? And so far, the answer has always been yes, and it's still yes for this one. But of course, how much of a jump in price are we looking at? Well, that matters. In my market, it's slightly more than double the price of the 10, but considering the intensity and the quality of flavor that we're getting in here, in my opinion, it is worth it. But as I mentioned, this is probably my least favorite from the line. Again, I scored it 90, so that's not really trash talking it. It's great. But compared to the other ones, it's not quite as good. The problem with this series is they're all limited editions. And if you're looking for the PAC or the OLC, certainly the MRC, those are all pretty much going to be sold out or at least thinning out in most markets. If you can get those first, I would recommend them over this. But if you can't, is it worth a price bump over the 10? Yes. All right, that's it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to help support the channel, I do have the Patreon. Otherwise, you can like, comment, and subscribe. Always appreciated. Of course, I do want to hear from you. Have you tried our SC01 here? Have you tried others from the line? How would you compare them? Finally, down below in the comments, you can let me know what you want to see me review next, and I'll keep it in mind for my upcoming videos. Bye, guys.